All right, this is going to be uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, Part 2 of Jacob's Ladder. Um, I hit the wrong button, so we got a Part 2. All right, uh, this is what somebody sent me. You know who you are. I'll, uh, I will let you know when it's my notes. So let's start with her study. She writes, Once the Father started showing me these truths, the Bible has opened up to me in more ways than I could ever have imagined. It finally makes the most sense ever. This might have something to do with this scripture in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the end of time, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And my note right here. Think about how knowledge has increased in the last 200 years. I mean, for over 5,000 years, people were using horses to get around. And in the last, oh, I don't know, less than 200 years, we've gone from horses to trains to cars to airplanes. I mean, you can go halfway around the world in a day now on a plane, whereas on a horse, you could maybe make 20 miles in a day. I mean, you know, maybe 20, 25 miles. Now you can go halfway around the world in one, you know, in one day. You know, that's why towns are generally 20 miles apart, because that was about all you could travel in about one day. So not necessarily good knowledge increasing, but knowledge shall be increased. And I did a Bible study on this, if you're interested. But when, when people find out who it is being persecuted by who, whom they are persecuting, well, when, when people find out, when the time of Jacob's trouble starts, the tribulation, when they find out who it is that's killing off who, they're going to figure out that they were lied to about who is Jacob and who is not and who's the seed of the serpent. All right, so let's continue with uh, what she sent me. All right, so, uh, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Well, we can really see the increased knowledge of the truth is not in the world today and could be the fulfillment of Scripture in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. All right, let's see. But the knowledge of the truth he is revealing to his people Israel. But those that have eyes to, hear, eyes to see and ears to hear, unfortunately at this time, not many are seeing and hearing. Uh, let's see. As Chaplain Bob has laid out for us, the people of God were the Hebrews from the tribe of Eber in Moses' day. And I'll briefly touch on this to refresh your memory. Then it was through the seed of Abraham with the free woman, Sarah, whom the child of promise was birthed, Isaac. We know the story in Genesis 16 where Sarai tells Abraham, uh, Abram, to go into Hagar, the bond woman, the Egyptian maid, when she bare Ishmael. But God did not make a covenant with Hagar, the Egyptian bond woman, and her son Ishmael. 
then in Genesis 17. All right, this is my note here. I did an entire Bible study on Ishmael and the Arab world. Did an entire study on it, if you're interested. So, all right, let's continue with what she sent me. Genesis 17. Uh, and when Abram was 90 years old, nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make a covenant. Now, what's a covenant? This is my notes. A covenant is like a contract. So God's making a promise. That's what a covenant is. And I will make a covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Do a, uh, My note. Do a few, few million Jews in the Middle East, does that, does that sound like being multiplied exceedingly? Um, I don't think so. And I will make a covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked to him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Not one, uh, my note, not one little Jewish nation in the Middle East. He said he'll be a father of many nations. England, Ireland, Scotland, United States, Germany, France, Holland, Sweden, Denmark, Norway. Think about it, people. Many nations. South Africa, well, was. Think about it, people. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and will make nations of these, of thee, and kings, kings shall come out of thee. Did you know that Germany, France, England, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, they all had kings. Think about it, people. And kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. How long is everlasting? Forever. For an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan, Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant before, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised and God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah, Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Verse 16, And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. All right, let's go to Genesis 21. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son, that which was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Do you know what the... Uh, 
Do you know Isaac is a um, my note here? It uh, one of the well Saxons comes. Have you ever heard of Anglo-Saxons? Saxons comes from the root word from Isaac, Isaac, Saxons. All right, then in verse 12, uh, 10, uh, she had a problem with uh, Ishmael was Isaac's older half-brother, and he was mocking Isaac, and she didn't like this. So, verse 10, Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And like I say, I've got a, an entire play, uh, study on Abraham and Ishmael. So she's basically saying, kick her out, this woman and her son. They're not going to be heirs with my son. Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So this pretty much establishes that the physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and then unto Jacob, that the covenant is made between God and their seed, a literal, physical seed. Children, people. Children. All right, so when we fast forward to Genesis 28, we're going to read it again. When Isaac told Jacob his son not to take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. All right. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, Arise, go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban. Remember, Laban means white. Thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty shall bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. So to make a long story short, Jacob went to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother, when it was getting dark. Skip to verse 11. And he lighted upon a certain place, and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place, and put them for pill pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder, a ladder, L-A-D-D-E-R, set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. The reference to the ladder that Jacob dreamed of can be likened to the DNA ladder or double helix of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The characteristics of an organism inherits are largely stored in cells as genetic information in very long molecules of dexyribo uh, dexyribose nucleic acid, or DNA, in 1953, it was established that DNA molecules consist of two complementary strands, each of which can make copies of the other. The strands are like two sides of a ladder and uh, that has been twisted along its length in the shape of a double helix or spring. The rungs which join the two sides of the ladder are made up of two terminal bases. My note here, Watson and Crick... Uh, discovered this when they got a scanning electron microscope and were able to look at this stuff. I mean, they didn't even know what DNA was until the, the 50s. And uh, I forget which one it is, Watson or Crick, one of the two. He was just blasted recently in the media. Uh, the guy uh, discovered DNA and discovered how genetics 
were passed on. And they blasted him because he had said that uh, intelligence is genetic. And he pointed out that, well, Europeans have among the highest IQs of all the nations on the earth, and that Africans have the lowest. And they blasted him on this. Well, you know, I'm sorry. The Romans were building aqueducts to bring water to their cities 2,000 years ago. And what do the blacks build in Africa? Uh, mud huts. Duh, to this day, to this day, blacks build mud huts in Africa. Am I disparaging the blacks? Do I hate people because they're black? No. But facts are facts, people. I mean, that's just the way it is. Europeans have built cities, infrastructure, all the great inventions, you know, air conditioning, refrigerating, heating, skyscrapers, bridges, dams, submarines, cars, planes, aeroplanes, trains, electricity, light bulbs. All these things were invented by white people. What is what is Africa invented? Virtually nothing. Does that make me a white supremacist? No. But you know, DNA people. God made his 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 covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. DNA. It looks like a ladder that's been twisted, people. All right, the end of my ranting and raving. Let's go read back where she continues here. Now let's examine this part of the verse. And the top of it reached to heaven. The ladder, Jacob's ladder, reached to heaven from the earth. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. The verse says the ladder reached to heaven, which signifies that the ladder or double helix DNA of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob also reached to heaven in that they are the seed of promise, of the covenant, of the heirs of salvation, of God the Father, of his chosen seed. Because the very next verse, God tells this to Jacob in verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and of God and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. My note here, people. How has black Africa blessed the earth? I mean, how I want somebody to t show me how black Africa has blessed the earth. You know, whites are the greatest farmers on the face of the earth. And when there was natural disasters, we've sent aid all over the world. Bangladesh, South America. When there were famines, we used to do that. Well, we got psychopaths for our... Uh, politicians now. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican. They're all basically the same, you know, but it used to be when there was a disaster, we would send food and aid all over the world. We bless the world. All right, let's go back and read what she wrote. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Now look, let's look at the angels of God ascending and descending on it. 
In Hebrews 1, verse 14, uh, it says, And referring to the angels of God, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to uh, to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So the angels don't minister to anyone else, just those who shall be heirs of salvation. Hmm, interesting. Now let's look at the stones. Remember Jacob took the uh, stones and poured oil on them and, you know, after he made a pillow. Uh, it says, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and laid them and lay down in that place to sleep. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillow and poured oil upon the top of it. And we know that the oil poured over the stone pillar is representative of an anointing a holy blessing of God as the king of Israel, the kings of Israel and the prophets were anointed with oil, meaning a special mission from God Almighty. An interesting connection in this verse is Matthew, where John the Baptist was rebuking the Pharisees and the Sadducees about being baptized. And if you don't know who the Pharisees and Sadducees were, they're denominations of Jews. And John said, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And you can read that in Matthew chapter 3 and verse uh, 9. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now, John the Baptist was uh, Jesus' cousin, therefore an Israelite. He knew who the true children of God were. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5, uh, we read, Ye also as lively stones are built, upon, uh, built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.20 And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. Jesus, the anointed of God. So there is much evidence throughout the Bible that the literal seed seedling of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob only are the chosen elect promised seed. Um, she says, listen to Chaplain Bob's study of Amos and who Israel is. I won't go into the, all that here. Uh, I've got a playlist, my note here, I've got a playlist on uh, you only have I known. And that's what she's referring to here. Uh, back to her. But I would like to introduce you to another study that further confirms that the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the literal people chosen of God to be his people, his inheritance, out of all the families of the earth. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known. Of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Uh, my note here, read Ezekiel chapter 31 if you don't know about the families of the earth. Take a look at it. The Assyrian was in the Garden of Eden, evidently with Adam and Eve. The Assyrians and, you know, Abraham's family uh, that he, they got the wives for Isaac and Jacob came from Syria. So, all right, back to her study. For this, we have to study God's commands for the Levite priesthood in the temple garments. My note here, if you take a look at the uh, temple garments and the colors of the temple or the uh, tabernacle in the Old Testament, for the Levite, the, Le uh, the book of Leviticus, 
it matches the same colors and symbolism uh, of the uh, mystery Babylon in Revelation. So, all right, let's continue uh, her study. So we know that God has kept a remnant of his people all throughout time. Jacob fathered the 12 tribes who became Israel, the literal descendants of his sons. So in knowing, knowing this, it is safe to assume that the temple procedures and garments were all given to the descendants of these 12 sons. God had some very detailed and specific instructions for the work of the temple. Some of it pointed to who Jesus is, and some of it was because of their disobedience. He wanted them to pass down the chronology of his people throughout the generations. And, you know, generations has reference to, you know, your children, you know, grandparents, parents, children, grandchildren. And if you look at uh, generations, the, the first four letters is G-E-N-E. Gene, genes, DNA, people. All right, let's go back to what she said. He wanted them to pass down the chronology of his people throughout the generations so that they would not forget their God and the God of their fathers like we have done today. He wanted God to be in all their thoughts. He knows we are but dust and how easily we go our own way, so he made laws to try to keep us in line. One of the commandments, I'm sorry, one of the commands of the priesthood was to make an ephod and a breastplate that was to be worn around the priest's neck when he went into the Holy of Holies. Let's take a look at Exodus chapter 28. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother. Now, if you don't know it, Aaron was the brother of Moses. They were Levites. Uh, they, Levi was one of the 12 tribes. They were the tribe of the priests. That's my note here. All right, let's go back to her thing. Uh, and take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I am filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and an ephod and a robe, and a broidered coat, a mitre and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments, H-O-L-Y, not W-H-O-L-Y, uh, or not holes, H-O-L, uh, well, you get the idea. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. My note, are not those the colors of Mystery Babylon? Verse 5. And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, and they shall make the ephod of gold of blue and of purple of scarlet and fine twisted linen with cunning work. If uh, it shall have the two shoulder pieces jo uh, thereof joined at the two edges thereof, and so it shall be joined together. Uh, and the curious girdle of the ephod which is upon it shall be of the same according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, of, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twisted linen. And thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave, not a grave in the ground, but engrave, you know, when you write something, and grave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on one stone, and the other six names of the rest on the other, according to their birth. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shall thou, uh, thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches of gold. And thou shalt put the two stones on the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial 
upon the children of Israel, and Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. So they were to take two onyx stones and engrave uh, the names of the children of Israel on them. Six, six names on one and six names on the other according to their birth or tribe. These children are the twelve tribes of Jacob Israel, the man, his descendants. Exodus 28:21. And the stone shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. My note. People, when you look at the New Jerusalem and you look at the twelve gates, they have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There is no 13th Gentile gate. And I did a Bible study on that too. All right, let's go to Malachi chapter 1. Malachi. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? They're talking about the second coming here, people. And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and the fuller's soap. And what, did, uh, what did you do with a refuller? My note. Uh, a refiner's fire, uh, when, you, when you get gold or silver, uh, you, you make it hot, and then you you want to separate the gold or silver from all the other junk that's in it. You want to get rid of the nickel and the copper, and, you know, that's what the refiner's fire is for. You want to pure gold. And what is fuller soap? Well, uh, ladies, you can answer this one. Uh, when the kids are running around with their light-colored pants and they get mud all over it, I mean, what do you do? You throw it in the washing machine, which was also invented by a bunch of white guys, right? And you pour soap in, and when it comes out, it's clean. You know, if you got white clothing, it comes out white, right? Then you know it's clean. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Uh, this is her work now. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And I will come near to you in judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the saucers. Okay, those are like witches and wizards, people. And I will be a swift witness against the saucers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear me not, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. My note, people, there are, there's deceivers out there or people that are deceived and they think the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament is two different beings. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Verse 16, then they that feared the Lord spake one often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. My note. This book of remembrance, is this the Lamb's book of life? Could be. Verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, and uh, in, that, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. All right, so uh, now let's correlate these 12 stones with the stones mentioned in Revelation. 
Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and had a great uh, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates. And at the gates twelve angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. My note, there is no 13th Gentile gate, people. There's 12 gates, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. There is no 13th Gentile gate. All right, let's continue. Uh, she writes in verse 13, On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had... Twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I don't think Judah, uh, Judas Iscariot is in one of them. I think it's Paul, but that's my note there. All right, let's continue. Uh, she skips down from uh, to verse 19. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. My note, these are uh, like the stones in the, the, the breastplate that we just read about. All right, let's continue with her study. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth uh, chrysophrasis, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. My note, uh, when you have something that's pure, that's in a crystalline form, where everything's aligned perfectly, it's transparent. That's why, uh, believe it or not, glass is made out of sand. But the thing is, sand is is not a crystal and the molecules are not perfectly aligned like a, a straight line but they take glass uh, they take sand and they heat it up get it very very hot and then they melt the sand and then when it uh, cools down it's perfectly aligned it's a crystal well we've never done that with gold but God says, he right here, he says he can do it. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And, you know, that's, have you ever seen crystals? Quartz, for example, you know, you kind of see through it. So, all right, let's continue with her work. All the twelve, all the twelves here are referring to the twelve tribes of Jacob, Israel, the man, the literal descendants Nowhere in Revelation is there a reference to any other people, and in fact, only these are mentioned in uh, chapter 7. Uh, and Let's see, verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were twelve sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas were uh, sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Ishishar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Okay, and, and finally, when does this scripture refer to Jacob's trouble and not just trouble for everyone? Um, uh, all right, let's see. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, uh, we're, we're in that, uh, Jeremiah that I read verse two, thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book for lo, the days come saith the Lord 
that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord uh, the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Therefore do, uh, do I see every man with his hands on his loin, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for the day is great, so that, uh, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So you see now, it is the literal seed of the free woman Sarah with Abraham that are spoken of all throughout Scripture. Nowhere does it say that the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Amorites, the Philistines, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, or the Hivites, who are probably other races other than whites, were heirs to salvation. My note. I somewhat agree with this. Uh, the children of Ham, uh, who were the father of the Canaanites, uh, they were noted to going to Ethiopia. Do your own study on that. I don't know. But uh, Israel also intermarried with a lot of these people. So who is who? I don't know. All right. Let's continue with what you wrote. And on this ending note, Jesus said, and I quote, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, 24. And in Matthew 10, 6, talking to his disciples, he says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Luke 1, 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Regarding John the Baptist in Luke chapter 1 and verse 16, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And there you have it, people. She, uh, that's how she finishes. All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. This is the end of part two. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.